Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine. Ain't got time to do everything you said you would. Frames of the past and the memory of you just come running by. Hey friends, welcome to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and in today's video, I've got another round of Dollar Tree Fall DIYs for you, so stay tuned. How could they say I was broken? How could they say you made me come undone? Let's start with this fall pumpkin sign. So the base of this are these pumpkin signs that Dollar Tree carries and the first step is to cut two of them in half. So I did the same thing in a recent Dollar Tree pumpkin video which I'll link for you but honestly it has opened up a world of possibilities to cut these in half. It gave me so many ideas including this sign. Also, after you cut the pumpkins, you're gonna wanna take some sandpaper and sand off all of the glitter, as well as the edges that you just cut to make sure everything's smooth. And then I cut the hot glue for the stems and wiggled it out. It was a lot easier to paint when the stems weren't in there. I didn't have to worry about like painters taping them off or anything. So this one fought me a little bit, but then I got everything out. Then I painted all four of my pieces orange and I did three coats to make sure that each side was fully covered. You can use whatever orange you have on hand. I happened to use a mixture of Waverly chalk paint and the pumpkin orange acrylic paint just so then that way it made it a little more opaque so you couldn't see through it. Then I wanted to add the grooves of a pumpkin to give it a little bit more of a dimensional look. So I just took a little bit of brown acrylic paint, you can use whatever color that you want, and I went through and dry brushed on some grooves to the pumpkin. Once those were all dry, then I went through with some Dollar Tree stickers. And instead of using the sticker part, I used the outside piece because that part is also sticky. And I use them as makeshift stencils. They were the perfect size for these little signs. And then I just went through with some painter's tape to get any edges that were really close that I don't have a lot of coverage on so that I didn't like oops and just get a line of paint because I do that all the time. It, like you would think for as much things as I paint, I would be able to, you know, get my stuff together, but you know, still over here struggling, making painting mistakes. So then I went through with two coats on each letter and then I peeled off the little makeshift stencil while it was still wet. So then that way the paint wasn't like curing and like sticking it down, it rips less that way. I touched everything up and then once it was dry, I used some heavy grit sandpaper and really roughed it up. Then I took some burlap ribbon and just cut out four sets of small little leaves so that I could add them to the top of my pumpkins. The last step before you go to assemble is I just took some garden shears, you can use tin snips or whatever you have, to just chop the little stems that you pulled out in half, just so then that way you have additional stems for all four of your pumpkins, because remember you started with two larger pumpkins, so if you don't cut them in half, you won't have options for the other two stems. So then once that happened, I glued on some top pieces and those cute little leaves. And I either put the stem in the hole that was originally created if it was the top of the pumpkin or just hot glued it on if it was the bottom. And then I added a little bit of jute twine to each so they all matched. And then I went through and laid out my sign where I wanted it and then I just added some strips of hot glue to assemble it. Because the bottoms are all flat, you just wanna make sure that that's all even so your sign sits flat, but then other than that, the spacing can really just be what you prefer. And that's it. I really like how much space this takes up, but the low profile, so it looks really cute on the shelf by our TV, which is where I have it right now. You could easily make this in any color combination that matches your decor for the holidays. This would also look really cute for Halloween if you wanted to do some black pumpkins with boo or spooky. 
Up next is this little pedestal. And honestly, you could use this for year round and paint it whatever color that you want. But I'm using it right now for my fall and Halloween decor. This is a super simple project. I took two of these skinny vases and two little trinket trays from Dollar Tree, grabbed some E6000 and glued them together. I gave it about an hour to cure in my house and then I went outside with just some black 97 cent Walmart spray paint and coated both of them. Now this, you could definitely do them in white for a more like farmhouse look. You could also do like a tan color. Really, you could paint them with chalk paint. There's a ton of different options. I knew it was gonna go with my Buffalo Check little runner and so that's why I decided to go with the black color. For sizing purposes, the candle that's on there now is just a Dollar Tree pillar, but the trinket tray is big enough to hold a three wick candle, which is awesome and it's pretty sturdy. I mean, I wouldn't go like smacking it, but if you need some like different heights for your candles or just decor in general, like I do here with this pumpkin, this thing is perfect. The little tray is the right size with the groove to keep everything in together. Now, speaking of fall, how I'm using it is I'm styling it on my dining room table. I just used a pumpkin from the Target Dollar Spot a few years ago and then these fun little gingham pumpkins that I got at Dollar General of all places. Each pack was $3 and I got a handful of those cute little pumpkins and it really kind of rounds out my table. Now, if you guys have been around for a while, you know I love farmhouse beads and I have a ton of different videos on different techniques that you can do. And to be totally honest, I was going to paint these and then once I saw how pretty these pearls were, I just left them for a really fun neutral fall vibe. So I used some create your own ornament wood slices, I love those, and then some pearls. I grabbed three different sizes so they come in different counts. So step one, I just took some dark walnut stain from Minwax and I stained two leaves and one pumpkin. You could use whatever you want. Also, if you want to do the Halloween vibe, you could definitely do those shapes as well. So then once I was done with those and those were dry, I came back in and grabbed a larger needle so that I could use that to help me guide the little pearls onto the yarn. So went through, guided everything on there. This particular strand ended up being 35 pearls, I believe, 30 or 35. And then I just quadruple knotted the yarn on there and slid everything down. And then I went ahead and made a tassel. So this process was the same for every one of the three strands to make the tassel. So I just wrapped it around my four fingers 30 times, took a smaller piece, wrapped it around the center and tied a double knot. And that is the top of your tassel. Then you're gonna want another piece to tie around the top of the tassel. And that is how you get that little top circular piece. I'm so bad with vernacular. I don't know like what any of these things are called. It's like cut this little piece and cut the ends. And then usually I say like cut, give it a haircut. So if you guys know what the top of a tassel is called, let me know down below because Lord knows I don't know. So you could easily leave them that simple, uh, but I wanted to add a little bit of buffalo check to these. So for this particular one, I just used some scrap ribbon, cut a piece for a little bow, and then I just hot glued it onto the pumpkin. And this is what that one turned out as. You guys know I love Buffalo Check. This is totally right up my alley. And I love how it kind of pulls this whole vignette together. Now for the other two options, you can do a variety of little patterns so that your strands look a little different. That first one was all medium beads. On this one, I went small, medium, large, medium, small, medium, large, medium, so that it kind of gave it a visual appeal. I just strung it until it was the length that I wanted, so you can really do whatever works. And then I did the same process, but instead of wrapping the tassel around 30 times, I wrapped it around 50 times so that it was a little bit more full, and I tied in some buffalo check ribbon there. And then for my third and final one, I did large and then small, large, small. That happened to work out for me so that I used a good chunk of the pearls that came in those packages. And then for the final one, for the Buffalo Check accent, I ended up cutting my piece of ribbon in half so that the little pieces were smaller. 
So these are awesome to put around little jugs or wreaths like how I've done here because the yarn is pretty stretchy. You can just kind of lay the beads over one another and it makes like a little natural like catching piece so it hooks like that. You could also easily paint the pearls if you wanted to so there's a lot of options here. And finally, you guys loved for my Christmas in July video when I did that faux bucket with the galvanized paint technique. So this DIY starts with one of these Halloween buckets. They have a lot of different colors and I just took some cheap white spray paint and gave it a base coat. I wasn't worried about fully covering it because I knew I was going to paint it. I needed a lighter color base so my paint would stick out because I didn't want to use so much paint to try to cover the black. So once that little spray paint job was dry then i went through with just a makeup sponge and some gray paint this happened to be waverly chalk paint but use whatever gray you have you want for this process to have a lighter gray a darker gray and then it's optional but like a metallic paint so the first step is to go through with your lighter gray and just cover the whole thing up and down dabs so that you get that kind of like brushed or um, beat metal look pounded metal Again, with that vernacular, I am like killing it today. <laughs> but you want to go through, cover the whole bucket, cover the handles, and then also cover a little bit of the inside so that if you see it, it matches. Then take your darker color and fill in. You don't want to go as crazy. So if you painted the first one 100%, paint it about 35-40%. Then I just went through with a little bit of metallic paint and just gave it just real quick, went through even less than the dark gray to finish off that look. So here is what your bucket will look like when it's dry. So you could easily leave it like that if you don't want to customize it for the season, or you could do one side Christmas, one side Halloween, one side fall, really whatever works. To then finish off the look, I took these little kind of rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and I needed two packs for this. So I did Farm Fresh Pumpkins in one font and then I cut out a two and a five for 25 cents and they didn't have a sense so I just cut out the zero and basically cut out some of it to make it look like sense it works for me so then I went through and put all of my letters down and then I just used my little slice tool it helped because I had the little box cutter it's a ceramic blade edge so I could peel up those pieces so that did help but you can use credit card you can use whatever you have on hand a pen I've used a bunch of random stuff it's whatever with is within like reaching distance for me so then once everything was on there it was time to assemble my greenery so I got all these florals from the Dollar Tree and I decided to use this hack that you usually see with fresh flowers because I didn't have any of those little foam like floral filler things. So two of my favorite tips when you're working with Dollar Tree florals is one, take tin snips or garden shears or a heavy pair of scissors and cut off the pieces so they're not all hooked together. It gives you a little bit more freedom when you're arranging. And number two, remove the leaves. I feel like Dollar Tree leaves look terrible, but once you pull them off, it, they don't look as cheap. So I use that with pretty much all of my greenery. And I'm talking about the green leaves, not the fall leaves. And that is one of the easiest floral arrangements I have done. I am loving the traditional colors here, but honestly, you could put whatever, like all my DIYs, you could put whatever color you want in there. This is just to inspire you and to give you some ideas for your own style. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you've already subscribed, feel free to share my channel with a crafting friend of yours so they can join in the fun as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Wonder if you think about me like I think.